Hey everyone, in this video, I wanted to deep dive into my process for landing a product manager offer. This is a bit different than my other videos in the past. I've created a Miro board. I'm not really gonna edit this down. And I just wanted to deep dive into all the different sections so that you can learn what I do on my end so that you can hopefully leverage it on your end. So we're gonna start off here uh, with the first section. And it's really about your resume. So every time that I decide to job search, to, to look for another job and hopefully land an offer, then the first thing that I'm doing is updating my resume. So when it comes to updating your resume, the most important thing is showing the recruiter and the hiring manager that you have the ability to drive impact in your roles. You don't just do things in your job, you do things that have an outcome. So we really wanna get out of the mindset of just listing out job responsibilities and instead highlighting accomplishments that are quantifiable with data. And so this XYZ framework is a really powerful framework to do just that. So the, the XYZ framework is X accomplishment measured by Y by doing Z action. So you're highlighting what did you accomplish in your role? You're measuring the magnitude of that accomplishment with Y, which is a data point. And then Z is actually the, the action that you took. What did you do to uh, elicit this accomplishment? Uh, the, again, the goal is to show to your recruiters and hiring managers that you have the ability and you've done it in the past to drive impact, to drive major outcomes. And this de-risks your candidacy. The recruiter or the hiring manager will say, okay, well, if Anthony did this in a previous role, he can probably do something similar if we hired him. And so that put together over and over again in all of your bullets is gonna really increase the attractiveness of your candidacy so you get that first round interview. So I wanted to go over a couple different example bullets here uh, that leverage this framework. So the first is increase year over year trial to subscription rate of product by 47% by A-B testing multiple user experience improvements. So here we are doing each part of this framework. X accomplishment is increasing the trial to subscription rate. Okay, that's great, but is it 1%, 2%? Here we're saying 47%. That's the overall impact, the magnitude of the impact of this accomplishment. And then how did we actually do that? What action did we take? Well, we tested several different user experience improvements. So now when a recruiter looks at this bullet, they're gonna say, oh wow, that's interesting. Anthony was able to do that in his past role, so he could probably do something similar if we gave him the opportunity. Next, updated XYZ page leading to a 78% increase in XYZ API connections and 5.2 million in annual recurring revenue. This is interesting because it still has the different components here, just in a bit of a different order. So the action is actually first. And this is totally fine to do, by the way. So what did Anthony do? He updated this particular page. And then the accomplishment was an increase in API connections and recurring revenue. The magnitude, the why, the data point, the quantifiable data point is a 78% increase and then a $5.2 million annual recurring revenue increase. And so again, we're showing here that Anthony was able to do something which led to an outcome, a major outcome as quantified with these data points here. Finally, introduced in-app rating feature that increased products Android Play Store rating from 3.7 to 4.6 stars. So, you know, if I was uh, creating a bad bullet, I would probably say something like managed uh, Android Play Store uh, for app. You know, it's very basic. It's just a responsibility. It's just something that you do. But Instead, what did the action that I took actually result in? In this case, I was able to increase the store rating um, considerably from 3.7 to 4.6 stars, which is really important for a company that is offering a mobile app. So again, what did I do? The Z action was introducing an in-app rating feature. The accomplishment was increasing the app store rating. And then Y, the actual data point is 3.7 to 4.6 stars. This has all the different pieces put together to create a really powerful bullet. Because now, you know, if you do this over and over again within your resume, the recruiter, the hiring manager, every interviewer you come across is going to be impressed with these bullets and really believe that you can do the same if, if that company and they gave you a chance and, and gave you an opportunity. So again, that's the first thing that I'm doing every time I go and approach a new job search is I'm going in and I'm updating my resume and making sure the content and the formatting is as powerful as possible. 
Okay, moving along, next is where I am improving and, and going back to my product portfolio. So I believe that making a portfolio, a product portfolio, is one of the most powerful things that you can do in your job, job search. It helps you to stand out from all the different candidates out there in the market. In today's market, there are so many qualified candidates out there that you have to do something that makes you stand out. And so one of the biggest things that you can do is launch and publish case studies. So um, my most recent job search, I was able to put together a case study on adding a search experience to the PayPal app. And I put this on my portfolio. So what does this actually look like? So, you know, within this case study, I'm defining the audience. I'm doing some research to segment the audience out and understand who are the users, what are they doing on the app, et cetera. Um, I'm looking into kind of what are the pain points of these users. So maybe they have a hard time finding a contact to request money to, whatever it may be. Um, here, I'm doing some competitive research. So I'm looking into other apps like Venmo. Like how is Venmo introducing a search, uh, a search bar into their app? Um, then I'm looking into the user journey. So how does a user go through the PayPal app? What you know, what friction points do they have? What are their expectations and, and what's the, the context? Um, then I'm looking into, okay, what does a solution look like to solve this problem? How could we add a search experience, a search bar into the app? And ultimately, how are we going to measure it? And so I'm putting all these different pieces onto a website where I can ultimately send this link to people. And it really shows that I have the skill set, the, the broad product management skill set to take a problem, take something vague, actually break it down, do user research, do some audience segmentation, and launch a solution. And, and uh, I can measure it. I can see if it's successful with analytics. So every time I job search, I'm going back to my product portfolio, and I'm making sure that it's up to date with my recent experience. I've added case studies that are relevant to the jobs that I'm trying to target. Okay, what do I do next? So I have my resume updated. I have my portfolio updated. The next thing I'm going to do is now leverage all these different pieces. So I may send an email where I'm reaching out to someone. I, you know, may have a mutual connection or whatever. I'm giving them a short little blurb. I have, you know, uh, I'm including a link to my portfolio and including the link to our portfolio is really powerful to elicit responses. So this person was able to respond pretty quickly um, and forward this email and, and my information to the director of product. Um, in this instance, I had already applied to the role and I really wanted to get that competitive edge. So I found the person's email and I sent a link to my portfolio. They clicked onto it, viewed it, and they were impressed. And then they ended up responding and um, reaching back out. And so the main thing that I'm trying to do when I'm job searching is leveraging my portfolio. If I have a case study that's relevant, I'm including the link directly to that case study in my email. And I'm trying to get a response so that I can ultimately get a referral. Just get my foot in the door some way so that I can stand out against all the other candidates who are applying. Uh, these days, there are hundreds, if not thousands of people that apply for the same role. So I have to go that additional effort and put that effort in to actually get a response and, and hopefully stand out from the crowd. Okay, so I've networked. I put together my portfolio and my resume. I've updated my LinkedIn and I've started to network with people. The next thing I do is I'm starting to get interviews, first round interviews, you know, um, hiring uh, manager screens, final round interviews. The biggest thing that I'm doing when I'm getting those interviews is pretty deep company preparation. So this is just an example of the types of questions that I would put together for a specific job, but I'm doing a lot more than that. In terms of company prep, I'm researching their business. I'm researching their competitors. I'm up, you know, I'm, I'm signing up for the product. I'm reading reviews. I'm doing a bunch of different things to understand the company. I'm looking into their funding, their journey over time. I want to understand what, what stage of this company is. Are they in growth mode? Are they in maintenance mode, optimization mode? You know, what can I learn about this company so that when it comes time to talking to the interviewers, I sound prepared, I sound passionate and eager about joining that company. So just an example, um, you know, as I understand it from the job description and conversations, one of the goals of this role will be unifying the checkout experience across multiple products. Is this a new initiative or is it already underway? So that question is very customized and targeted. It's not just a basic question like how many people are on your team or what's the company culture like? 
In this instance, I'm really trying to get to a deeper level of understanding about the role. And when you ask questions like that, it signals to the interviewers that you're really you know, ready to hit the ground running. You understand this role, you understand the context. They can be confident that if they gave you an offer and you started in two weeks, you'd be able to continue asking questions like that so that you can get up to speed quickly and start making an impact. Um, another example, how do, how do you plan on continuing to stay competitive with all the other all-in-one solutions out there? So commerce, customers, staff, are, um, are there any other horizontal moves that you plan on making, like identity verification, stuff like this? So you're really taking that step to understand the company and really understand the role and everything about it. Now, this takes time. This takes hour, a couple hours at minimum of research to do before your interviews, but I find it is incredibly powerful for you to actually stand out against all the other qualified candidates. Because when it comes to final round interviews, a company may do five to 10 final round interviews. Each is five hours long. So there's a ton of time that people are dedicating to these final round interviews. And you may have three or four candidates who are perfect for the role or one or two. And they've answered everything well, like they're qualified, they have a great background, they were strong in the interviews. Um, but what is it actually, what, what separates you from all these other people? And oftentimes it may come down to just your fit and your passion, like how much preparation you put into this role. If they can say, well, Anthony was really prepared with really insightful questions. He really understands this role. I am more confident that he'd be able to start and, and get up to speed and have impact faster. You know, that's when I will be getting the offer instead of another candidate. And so these are the types of things that you need to keep in mind as you come to the position of preparing for the interviews. The next thing that I'm doing here is I'm going over and I'm preparing for the specific types of product manager interviews. I'm brushing up on all the different types and making sure that I'm the best that I can be in each one. So the first is product sense. This is a question like, imagine you're a PM at Airbnb. How would you improve it? And so you have to take this vague, high-level problem, break it down into a bunch of different pieces, and show that you are methodically thinking through this problem, and then ultimately offering a solution and a way to measure success of that solution. The next is around product analytics. This is one that people oftentimes fail because they don't have a deep understanding of analytics, how to measure success, et cetera. So an example of the type of question you may be asked is what metrics would you track if you were Amazon's checkout PM? So you know, an inexperienced candidate might jump straight into saying, well, probably like the revenue that they're making or the conversion rate, whereas a more experienced interviewer who understands the frameworks is able to break this down and say, well, let's first start at what is Amazon's goal? And then how does the checkout page fit into that broader goal? What are we trying to accomplish here? What's the user journey that leads users to this page? So there's a lot more um, context that's required to answer this question. And so when it comes time to preparing for interviews, I want to go back to uh, those frameworks and make sure that I'm the best that I can be in them. Next, product strategy. So should Netflix launch a podcast app? This is all about strategy. It's not a, a, about exactly designing a podcast app. It's about whether or not Netflix should make a decision to uh, launch a new product or not. And that's a strategy position. So you really want to understand and break down all the different pieces of this decision. And so really making sure that I'm prepared for this type of question. Now, this could be any number of the, any cut, any question, really. It's should Amazon, why did Amazon buy Whole Foods? You know, why did Amazon acquire One Medical? You could basically replace these different values here, Netflix and podcast with any number of company or products. And you have to be prepared to answer anything. And, you know, the only way to prepare for that is understanding the frameworks and getting really good with practice over and over again. Next, technical. Explain an API to a non-technical stakeholder. You know, these questions will come up to make sure that you have an understanding of technology. You can work with engineers. You can be that bridge between the tech team and the business side of the organization um, to really explain things. And so you may want to brush up on technical concepts and make sure that you have that baseline understanding. And then finally, behavioral. So these are the types of questions that you can expect to always be asked. So tell me about a time that you failed. What did you learn from that experience? And here, you're going to want to leverage a framework like N plus star plus TL, which I've spoken about in other videos. You want to show in a very structured way um, your experience and what you've learned from it and how that impacts your, your kind of philosophy about product. 
So to zoom out here, again, I'm really trying to make sure that I'm the best interview interviewer possible um, or interviewee, if, if you might say, candidate. You know, I want to make sure that I'm answering these questions well. I get a strong yes response from all the different interviewers and interviews I have, which ultimately will result, result in an offer. So that brings us, us to the final piece here, which is around negotiating offers. So if I've done all the other pieces of this puzzle well, I will end up with multiple different offers. And at this stage, I want to you know, either negotiate them and decide the best choice for me. So what does this look like? I'm trying to evaluate the culture fit of the company. You know, do, do I fit in with how they think about product and how they run their company? Um, what does the compensation look like? I'm gonna try to negotiate compensation across the different offers to try to maximize compensation. Um, what is the product? What am I going to be learning? What will be challenging in this role, et cetera? So I'm, I'm really starting to think at this stage about which offer, now that I hopefully have multiple, am I going to go with? Um, and how can I maximize the compensation of those offers to ultimately um, impact me in the best way from a personal finance standpoint? So to zoom out, again, the, the real components of this strategy are number one, updating my resume and then LinkedIn. Second, launching a product portfolio and, and making sure that it's up to date with the relevant case studies. Third, again, starting to leverage those case studies and product portfolio in my networking outreach to get referrals. Four, preparing for company interviews by really deeply understanding the company. Five, brushing up on my interviewing skill set so I can become the top 1% candidate. And then finally, negotiating the offer to pick the best one for me. So that is a bit of a deep dive that I wanted to give into this strategy. Now, if you want to work on really learning all these different components in a lot greater detail, definitely click the link in the description below. I run a membership program where I teach all these different components and then I pair it with coaching. So weekly group coaching to help you get unblocked. For example, one of the things that we may go over in our coaching calls is how can I actually um, make a resume bullet that is powerful. So the member may edit their bullet, uh, their resume bullet and then come to me for advice and guidance on, is this powerful enough? How should I structure this? What tips do you have to actually improve it? Um, the coaching applies to each step of this job search funnel, ultimately with the goal of helping the members land PM offers. So click the link in the description below to learn more about that. Um, it's really exciting and fulfilling for me to help people get into these PM positions. And um, after seven or so years doing this over and over again, I've now learned what works and what doesn't work. And so it's really exciting to help teach people exactly the difference so they don't waste their time and they can work smarter, not harder. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you're interested in learning more about that, click the link in the description below and I will see you in the next video.